in recent years, the backplate and wing-style buoyancy compensator setup has surged in popularity in mainstream diving. However, as it becomes more widespread, the true essence of its simplicity and purpose exponentially fades away. Therefore, let's take a moment to revisit the origins and correct setup of this system by stepping back in time. In the late 1980s and early 1990s, the infamous Woodville Karst Plane Project was established with the aim of formalizing efforts to explore and map underwater cave systems spanning an area of approximately 1,200 square kilometers from Tallahassee, Florida to the Gulf of Mexico. Prior to this initiative, cave diving was largely unregulated and considered the absolute cutting edge of human exploration, resulting in a high fatality rate due to the lack of standardization and the diverse backgrounds of participants compounded by the treacherous environment. To address these challenges, the doing it right or DIR approach to scuba diving emerged, emphasizing fundamental diving skills, teamwork, physical fitness, and streamlined minimalistic equipment configurations. The backplate and wing system are one of the outcomes of this effort. Building your own kit offers more than just the satisfaction of understanding its assembly and the convenience of easy repairs. It also grants you the freedom to select the finest components rather than settling for off-the-shelf options. Now, let's delve into the specific components required for assembling your system. To begin, a backplate is essential. The choice of material is entirely yours. There's no incorrect selection, only considerations for proper application. One feature you should be mindful about, which is the bottom slot that's used for mounting the backplate. Ideally, the backplate should accommodate both single back mount and twin set configurations. While all backplates feature three screw holes at the top, it's advisable to opt for one with a longer vertical slot at the bottom, enhancing compatibility with any cylinder configuration. The webbing's available in varying levels of stiffness, so let's take a moment to compare them. We tend to favor softer webbings because they offer the same durability as stiffer ones, but are more manageable in and out the water. Furthermore, you will need to construct your D-ring assembly, which consists of two main components. Firstly, the tri-glide, which in this case holds the D-ring in place on the webbing, and secondly, the actual D-ring itself. There are two different types of tri-glides available. The standard stainless steel type and the serrated webbing tri-glide which offers enhanced security by biting into the webbing and withstanding greater loads. We will require four of the standard type and three of the serrated type, making a total of seven. You will also need two pre-bent D-rings and two straight ones. If you're building your own crotch strap, account for an extra one, bringing the total to five. You will need approximately 25 centimeters of bungee to make the inflator hose slider, which will be demonstrated later on. To secure the waist of the harness, you will also need a stainless steel belt buckle. To ensure the harness is securely fastened, you'll require either a pre-made crotch strap with the DPV ring pre-installed and one end sewn shut. Alternatively, you can learn to construct your own, as demonstrated later in the video. Additionally, make sure you have enough rubber bands prepared as they are integral parts of the system. Legend has it that in earlier times, the initial prototypes were fashioned from road signs. Thankfully, the industry has progressed significantly since then, offering two primary options for backplates nowadays. The most prevalent choice is a stainless steel backplate available in various thicknesses, typically weighing between two to six kilograms. Alternatively, aluminum is frequently utilized due to its lighter nature. If you primarily dive in a dry suit, heavy steel plates might initially appear preferable. However, they often limit your capacity for adding extra weight, such as trim weights, especially when diving with steel doubles. This is why we suggest considering an aluminum plate instead. Not only does it provide flexibility for adding extra weight when needed, but it's also more convenient for travel. As the market evolves, manufacturers introduce modified designs, but few of these genuinely enhance performance. Therefore, our recommendation is to adhere to the traditional backplate shape. Next up is the harness. The classic harness configuration consists of one continuous webbing and additional set of accessories. All forms of comfort harnesses with padding and extra clips defeat the purpose of this holistic approach. So once again, 
adhering to the philosophy of simplicity, you only need to purchase approximately four meters of webbing, which should be plenty. This webbing should be five centimeters or two inches wide. Once the harness is fitted, you can cut off the excess to optimize the setup. The reason for constructing your system from one continuous webbing, instead of using quick releases and other buckles, is to greatly reduce failure points. As you advance to more challenging types of diving, like technical deep diving or any form of overhead diving, the importance of this becomes even more critical. If the harness were to unexpectedly come undone, it could immediately result in a life-threatening situation. Many mistakenly believe that without quick releases, donning and doffing the harness is challenging. However, when properly adjusted, it's quite straightforward. The simplistic approach extends to all the accessories attached to your harness, prompting us to examine them more closely. In essence, every addition to your gear should have a clear and well-justified purpose. Otherwise, it's best left out. The right side of the harness features a shoulder D-ring that's primarily used for clipping off your long hose, as well as your backup light. To assemble this, you will need a tri-glide and either a standard metal D-ring or a pre-bent one. We suggest using the latter on the shoulders as it will make it easier to clip onto. Right below this, add a rubber band that can be used for retaining your backup light, making it as streamlined as possible. The most reliable option for obtaining these rubber bands is to purchase a standard bicycle tire inner tube and cut it into straight pieces. This proves to be way more durable than the elastic options that will get loose over time by sun and water exposure. With the right side of the harness completed, let's shift our focus to the left. At the upper part of the webbing, it's necessary to affix an inflator hose slider. This ensures your BCD inflator hose remains securely positioned, preventing it from dangling or floating upwards. To accomplish this, gather a standard tri-glide and a 25cm bungee with a maximum diameter of 4mm. Create a closed loop with the bungee by tying the ends together using a standard fisherman's knot, then secure it in place with the tri-glide. For detailed instructions on tying the knot, refer to the tips and tricks provided at the conclusion of this video. We recommend investing a little more in high-quality bungee material for the inflator hose slider, as the elasticity of lower-quality options tends to degrade rapidly, resulting in more frequent replacements than desired. Underneath this, you'll need to set up the left shoulder D-ring, which should mirror the configuration of the previously set right side. Pay close attention to the positioning of this D-ring. If you are using the pre-bent version, it's important to install it in a way that, when set and positioned downwards, it will bend outwards from the webbing. This will allow you to easily clip onto it without actually needing to look at it. Additionally, include a retainer band below the D-ring. It's worth noting that these inner tube rings are extremely durable. However, they will still need to be replaced eventually. For that, you will need to partially disassemble the harness. This should not be an issue now that you have learned the correct way of building it. For someone who has done this a few times, it would take about 10 minutes from start to finish, including the adjustments, so it really is not a big deal. During the assembly phase, neither the precise positioning of these accessories nor the sizing of the shoulder loops of the harness is crucial. Your focus should solely be on including every necessary accessory in the correct sequence. Once the setup is complete, you'll have the opportunity to adjust everything according to your own preferences. Threading the lower section of the harness is of utmost importance and two key factors require careful attention. Primarily, ensure that the webbing aligns with your body. To accomplish this, extend the shoulder strap alongside the back plate and rotate it outward by 90 degrees, positioning the already installed D-ring to face outward. After achieving proper alignment, the subsequent critical step is to begin threading the webbing from the interior outward, rather than vice versa. Initiating from the outer slot would risk the shoulder loop slipping off your body during diving. To secure the webbing on the bottom part of the back plate, we suggest using an extra tri-glide as shown in the video. This will stop the shoulder loop from being pulled larger by the cylinder's weight, essentially locking in your initial size adjustments. Perform the identical procedure on the opposite side of the harness. 
Although it mirrors the previous process, we demonstrate it from various angles to ensure clarity and ease of comprehension. Ensure that the right side of your waist strap remains free of pre-installed accessories, maintaining its readiness for accommodating a canister light if your dive requires to have a high-powered light. Meanwhile, equip the left side of the waist strap with an extra D-ring for securing your SPG and the closing buckle. Construct this D-ring similarly to those found on both shoulder loops, utilizing a tri-glide with a slight difference. The D-ring itself does not need to be pre-bent making any conventional metal design suitable for this purpose. Be sure to cut another retainer band from the inner tube and place it on the webbing between the SPG D-ring and the buckle. This will allow you to easily stow away any excess webbing from the waist strap. To complete this, we need to add the waist buckle. Any no-name stainless steel buckle you can find will suffice. You can acquire one from almost any shop that sells scuba equipment. The crucial aspect is how you thread it onto the harness. The aim is to guide the webbing through the slot so that the end of the webbing emerges at the backside of the buckle, making it convenient to stow away with the previously installed rubber retainer. As we encourage trimming the surplus webbing, it's crucial to retain ample length on both ends of the waist strap. This allows for flexibility in adjusting the system to the appropriate size, which becomes significant when altering exposure protection or experiencing fluctuations in muscle mass or body weight. The last component we need here is the crotch strap. Generally, you have two options when it comes to crotch straps. You can either buy a purpose-made one that has the DPV stow ring sewn in, forming a closed end on one side of the webbing, or you can make the crotch strap from just a piece of extra webbing. In both cases, however, we recommend looking for an approximate length of 130 centimeters. The type of webbing you want to use for the crotch is usually softer than the rest of the harness. This will make it more comfortable even with thinner wetsuits. There's also a relatively new design out there that forms a V-shape instead of a single strap. While this might appear more comfortable for men, it's utterly useless if you ever want to use a DPV as this design is unsuitable for attaching one. All backplates have a pre-cut slot on the bottom to mount your crotch strap. This also identifies the bottom of the backplate. You will have to add a bottom D-ring, which will serve as a great mounting point to attach certain pieces of your equipment, as well as a closing mechanism for the strap. Correctly adjusting the harness is of utmost importance. The position of the backplate should be verified by the tip of your middle finger, which should just touch the top of the backplate when casually reaching back. Next up is your bottom D-ring. You should be able to comfortably find it with your thumb when reaching for it. This will become even easier when you are in horizontal trim. Position the SPG D-ring on your left side installed on the waist strap so that there's enough space between the D-ring and the backplate for your palm to comfortably fit. The DPV toe ring should be positioned right below your waistline, with the buckle on the waist strap placed to the right of the crotch strap. The sizing of the crotch strap is also crucial because it determines the stability of your gear underwater. If it's too tight, it will restrict your movement, and if it's too loose, the wing will cause you to face downward when floating on the surface before or after the dive. The top of the crotch strap should be level with your waist strap, and you should be able to fit two fingers above the belt. The best way to verify the position of the shoulder D-rings is to establish a T-body position, close your eyes, and reach for your shoulders simultaneously with both hands. The rings are positioned perfectly when your thumbs bump into both D-rings, making it possible to interact with your accessories without direct visual reference. 
Lastly, verify the tightness of your harness. You should be able to comfortably fit your fist between your shoulder and the webbing. It should not be looser, as it will affect the position of your tank, nor should it be tighter, as it will become difficult to don the harness. Removing the excess webbing from your harness is a straightforward process that doesn't require any specialized tools, contrary to what some may believe. It's as simple as trimming the excess material, applying ample heat to the ends, and then some pressure to seal them. This simple technique helps prevent fraying and ensures a neat and professional finish. By taking these simple steps, you can effectively tidy up your harness and achieve the desired result. To create the required loop for the inflator hose slider, you will need a piece of bungee approximately 25 centimeters long. Begin by tying a fisherman's knot, which is a bend with a symmetrical structure consisting of two overhand knots. To tie this, start by taking one end of the bungee and forming an overhand knot close to the other end. Then, repeat the same process with the other end of the bungee. Apply pressure to securely tighten the knot in place. Trim off any excess bungee and ensure to burn the ends to seal them and prevent deterioration over time. If you choose to craft your own crotch strap rather than using the readily available pre-assembled ones with a closed end, featuring a DPV toe ring, gather the following materials. A piece of webbing, preferably softer than the rest of your harness for added comfort, a tri-glide and a D-ring. Begin by threading the webbing through one slot of the tri-glide, then position the D-ring so its straight side aligns with the tri-glide. Subsequently, thread the webbing through the other slot of the tri-glide, effectively enclosing the D-ring between the tri-glide and the webbing. Ensure to leave a sufficiently large loop to afford ample space for maneuvering. Next, take the end of the webbing and feed it back through the same slot of the tri-glide it last emerged from before threading it through the other slot as well. This process should result in a small end piece of webbing and a reasonably sized loop tailored for your crotch strap. If the sizing is not optimal initially, adjustments can be made by pulling the webbing through the tri-glide in the required direction until the desired fit is achieved. Thanks for watching and hope you learned something. Consider subscribing to Flow State Divers to become part of the community of conscious divers and to get notified on our upcoming content.